Did you happen to watch the conference last night? I did. Whole hour worth of torture. All right. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm not giving Joe Biden any credit. I, I don't know what everybody's talking about. You know, he, he did okay. No, he's not. The standards are very low, okay? You ever play that game, uh, go go low when you got to go under the stick? What is it called? Uh, how low can you go? Yeah, <laughs> the news media is playing how low can you go with Joe, all right? How low can you go, Joe? How low? Let, let's, let's set the standards very low. In this case, we're going to set the standards high so he can actually go under without uh, falling on his head, all right? So, no, Joe Biden doesn't get any uh, credit. We're not, we're not doing any of that right here. Not on this channel. I don't care how good it was. There's no way in the world you could undo what you saw in the debates and undo what you've seen, for, for that matter, for the past four years. All right? There's not, they're not getting the easy pass out of this. Joe Biden's awful. He is the worst president in history. Okay? He's the worst president in history. All right? We're, we're in two wars. We're funding them. Uh, we're on the brink of World War Three. Okay, and nobody's really talking about it. Nobody cares because we've always done war. It's okay. No, it's not. Inflation is at an all-time high and the borders are wide open. All right. But Joe Biden, he doesn't even know the difference between Vladimir Zelensky and Vladimir Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway, Mr. President. I'm better. You are a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Nope. Long night for Joe Biden. Very long night. I had to stand up and talk for an hour long. They said he uh, was talking without a teleprompter. That's a lie. Joe Biden always has a teleprompter. He has to have a teleprompter. Okay. I'm not giving Joe Biden any credit. Zero. Why? Because I don't think he deserves any credit. Okay. They're well scripted, well prepared. Uh, you know, he's got a team of monkeys around him doing all the work for him. He doesn't actually really have to do much. And that's what it looks like from my perspective. Uh, I'm not giving Joe Biden any credit, okay? It doesn't make any sense. He doesn't even know who his vice president is, all right? He thinks that his vice president is the former president. What concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. Gaff after gaff after gaff, like... It's a it's a dispensary of gaffes like, you know, a t the man can't talk straight and everybody's cheering him on, you know, at the big boy conference. I wasn't a big boy conference. OK. All right. It's an old man's conference. That's that's what the hell it is. And we're tired of watching Joe Biden embarrass the living crap out of us on the world stage. Just absolutely sick of it. It's, it's nonsense. And, and now Joe Biden made some claims here about Donald Trump uh, claiming that he's just on his golf cart. And he's not really doing much. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How can you say you'll be up for that next year, in two years, in four years, given the limits you've acknowledged that you have today? The limits I've acknowledged I have? There's been reporting that you've acknowledged that you need to go to bed earlier and your evening around eight. That's not true. Look, <laughs> what I said was, Instead of my every day starting at seven and going to bed at midnight, it'd be smarter for me to pace myself a little more. And I said, for example, the eight, seven, six stuff, instead of starting a fundraiser at nine o'clock, start at eight o'clock. People get to go home by 10 o'clock. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about. And if you look at my schedule since I've since I made that stupid mistake of in the campaign in the, in the debate, I mean, my schedule has been full bore. I've done, where's, and where's Trump been? Riding around in his golf cart, filling out his scorecard before he hits the ball? Meanwhile. I'm pretty surprised that they actually asked him some uh, tough questions, so-called tough questions, but the standards are very low for Joe Biden. All right, but uh, especially the guy at the end. Anybody see the guy at the end uh, when they basically turned his mic off and he had to yell. <laughs> Respectfully, earlier you misspoke in your opening answer and you referred to Vice President Harris as Vice President Trump. Right now, Donald Trump is using that to mock your age and your memory. How do you combat that criticism from tonight? Listen to him. 
That was actually some pretty good advice by Joe Biden. Uh, yeah, listen to Trump. Go ahead and listen to him. It just takes him about two and a half to three years to listen to Trump um, because he just doesn't like him very much, uh, just like the rest of the Trump deranged uh, fantasy world. Uh, but the mainstream media, they're saying that Joe Biden actually did a pretty good job. Can you believe that? I told you the standards are extremely low when it comes to Joe Biden. So is his IQ. Uh, and anybody who follows Joe Biden has a very low IQ. But it's kind of hard to believe that uh, they're coming to rescue Joe again. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, and I, th- I guess it's over, guys. It's shocking to no one that the media wasted absolutely no time beginning the resuscitation effort of one Joe Biden. Yeah. After two whole weeks of asking questions, let's take a watch at that resuscitation effort. Watch. I haven't they had them doing a lot more of these. Uh, that that really is about as comfortable as he's going to get. There was a moment at the beginning where he said Vice President Trump instead of Vice President Harris, but he did have lengthy answers on, on subject areas that he knows very well. I think it's fair to say there were obviously some verbal missteps. There were some periods of haltingness, but also periods of genuinely impressive command and fluency. He is not only strong on foreign policy, he is just, just fundamentally right on foreign policy. So give some credit where credit is due it was a solid performance except for one flood wow joe your reaction and once it is basically official that biden's not going anywhere is that the end of the tough questions of joe biden tough questions yeah last night quote unquote these reporters again were handpicked for a reason he had a list of reporters to call on i didn't hear questions around for instance uh, I'll, I'll read them for you actually because these are questions that i would have asked okay How can you, Mr. President, not have a cabinet meeting since October, nine months when the world is seemingly on fire? I I would think that that would be a pretty good question. There wasn't one question about Biden's refusal to release his medical records. Not one question about a Parkinson's doctor visiting the White House on several occasions. Do you have a neurological condition or disease, sir? Would have been a pretty good question to ask. Not one question about, by the way, the cost of living in this country being up 20 percent not one on inflation is that incredible number one issue in the election you finally get this guy to a press conference and no one asked that question not one question about gas prices up 50 percent not one question about 10 million immigrants coming into this country illegally including hundreds on the fbi terror watch list not one question about hunter biden now apparently being the unofficial chief of staff to the president of the united states so you add it all up and yes i guess he stuck the landing like a boeing plane when you consider what we saw last night with all those gaps i'm sorry if this is the bar which is basically a speed bump then great he passed it now here's the bad news for democrats at this point guys okay he did well enough in the msnbc world Mm -hmm. where he now can say see i got this and now democrats can't say you gotta leave because they'll say look i did fine during that press conference what else you got yeah trump But not so fast, not so fast mainstream media, MSNBC. Uh, Joe Biden's not out of the woods. As a matter of fact, the woods are burning down and Joe Biden's tied to a tree. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) it's not over. All right. So look, 17 lawmakers uh, now, 17 lawmakers want Joe Biden out of the way. Okay, 17. All right. It's not over. All right. Joe Biden's not squirming out of this, guys. All right. I want you to take a look at this Fox clip because it's not over. Joe Biden's getting wrecked. Intelligence Committee member is the latest Democrat to call on President Biden to withdraw from the 2024 race. There are now 17 Democratic lawmakers telling the president to clear the way for another candidate. Madeline Rivera has the latest for us. Hey, Maddie. Hey, good morning, guys. For several Democrats, the president's performance at the news conference last night didn't inspire confidence. Instead, they say that constant hand-wringing is exactly the reason why he should drop out of the race. It's really not about tonight. And one of the really kind of sick uh, aspects of this moment is that we are watching every speech, every rally, every debate and saying, how did he do today? Um, And that's just not the way to think about the presidency of the United States. 
One Democratic lawmaker, Congresswoman Marie Glusenkamp Perez, is even suggesting the president resign. Some Democrats are hoping former President Obama and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who reportedly have spoken in recent days about the president's campaign, can convince the president to step aside. CNN reporting they spoke with more than a dozen members of Congress, operatives, and multiple people in touch with both Obama and Pelosi, many of whom say that the end for Biden's candidacy feels clear, and at this point it's just a matter of how it plays out even after Thursday night's news conference. But Congressman Jim Clyburn, a top ally of the president, says he's still standing behind him. The conversation should focus on the record of this administration, on the alternative to his election, and let Joe Biden continue uh, to make his own decisions about his future. He's earned that right. And I am going to give him that much respect. If he decides to change his mind later on, then we would respond to that. Going back to the news conference last night, our Peter Ducey, who was in the room, had a lot of questions. One of them was what the president feels about his former boss reportedly working quietly to replace him at the top of the ticket. Guys, back to you. Yeah, that would bug me. All right, <laughs> Maddie, thank you very thank much. Thank you. You got it. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, I just feel bad for George Clooney. I feel bad for Rob Reiner, and I feel for Michael Moore, because I don't think he's leaving. He's not leaving. I don't think he's leaving. He's not leaving. Do you really feel I, bad for them? Nope. Yeah, the only reason why the rest of the Democrats haven't agreed to kick Joe out of the party is because they have nobody else, and it's too late. They're stuck. That's the only, make no mistake, guys, that's the only reason why uh, they're still pushing along. Clyburn uh, is insane, okay? They're still on the teeth of the government. They're not, they're not going to change uh, course uh, because they don't care, all right? The only, only thing they want to do is defeat Donald Trump. They don't have any great policies to cite, uh, you know, starting a bunch of wars. That's not, that's not good policy. It never has been. Um, funding these wars, uh, open the borders, uh, th killing the economy. These are awful, all right? So the only thing they're running on is the same thing that they always have ran on. We don't like Trump. That's it. Okay, so... You know, I don't feel sorry for highly weird actors who put up their money because if you're supporting Joe Biden, there's something wrong in your head. You shouldn't uh, support a guy with open borders that's killing the economy. Come on. <laughs> that's how insanely out of touch the highly weird uh, actors and actresses are. Um, and they're paying a lot of money in taxes because of Joe Biden's policies. But they don't get it. And they're still and they're giving extra money to uh, a declining, decrepit, old, degenerate great grandfather so you know i no, i don't feel sorry for any of them um but there'll be no second chances for joe here there will be no uh, bringing him back to life uh because you can't reverse alzheimer's and you can't reverse parkinson's it doesn't go away you know so uh you know let me know what you think guys uh did joe biden do an okay job <laughs> did he did he uh make you feel better <laughs> Because uh, nine times out of ten, he didn't make anybody feel better, okay? They just, you know, mainstream media is always going to say whatever they uh, want us to believe, all right? Even if you see with your own eyes um, the truth. So, like, share, and subscribe. This has been Yup, I Said It. Until next time.